everybody. Welcome back to Filecoin Foundation's D-Web Decoded podcast. We're doing a special series here at Davos, Switzerland for World Economic Forum 2025. Uh, got a beautiful backdrop here. Mountains behind us, the town behind us. We've got the World Economic Forum Congress Center annual meeting right behind us. So I'm your host, Aaron Stanley. And today I'm joined by Cash Rizagi, who's the Chief Business Officer at Circle. Thanks for being here, Cash. Thanks a lot. Really looking forward to it. Awesome, awesome. So maybe give us a quick intro to yourself and Circle. I mean, most people know USDC, obviously, but sure. they may not necessarily know Circle, the uh, the 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 masterminds behind it. Sure, sure. So Circle is uh, best known for being the issuer of USDC, the world's largest digital dollar, regulated digital dollar stablecoin in the world. Um, in addition to USDC, we're also the issuer of EURC, um, and we have a, a variety of different developer products as well. A whole developer suite of products that are that's aimed at making uh, Web three technologies and, and blockchain infrastructure more, more easily accessible for developers that are building next-gen apps. So we, we really like to see ourselves as a company that's merging Web3 and, and, and traditional finance. Um, my role at Circle as Chief Business Officer is I'm responsible for all of our global partnerships that's helping drive the growth of our, of our products. Very cool, very cool. And uh, USDC obviously had a really big year in 2024. Uh, 2023 was a little interesting with all the banking issues in the U.S., <laughs> right. that, but uh, 2024, you guys really rebounded and really had a strong year. And now going into 2025, stablecoins are really the hot theme in crypto right now. Uh, we'd love for you guys to we'd love for you maybe to give us some color on just what what, what did what was 2024 like for you guys? Sure. What, uh, what what type of adoption were you guys seeing? Sure. I mean, listen, if 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 you want to test people's resiliency, I think uh, being <laughs> in crypto for the last five ten years uh, will 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 show you resiliency. Um, you know, as you mentioned, 2022 and 2023 were were rough years for for all of crypto for a variety of reasons, whether it was the banking crisis or or you know FTX, etc. And 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 you know, I think. The, the impact on all of crypto was felt. And we started to see that rebound in, in the latter part of 2023, getting into 2024, uh, with respect to just securing more banking relationships and banking partnerships, making it easy for, for businesses to easily swap from fiat into digital assets. And, and that's a core aspect of what we do, providing that infrastructure for that seamless transition from fiat to, to stable coins and back to fiat. And I think that's one of the, the, the um, advantages that, that Circle has. But then as a whole, um, as you've seen regulation around the world begin to ease up and more and more companies and businesses understand the power of blockchain and digital assets, you're starting to see real use cases. And I think for a long time, the question is, is what's the use case for, sta for, for, for crypto? What is it? Um, and now we're seeing it's, it's the movement of money. It's the settlement of money, the, the, the ease of transfer, the, the, the cost effectiveness. And so we've started to see that um, in 2024 with more and more businesses beginning to use it as not only a store of value, but a, as, a, as a transfer um, asset as well. Yeah, it's interesting because stable coins, I mean, these have been around for years, right? Sure. It's not necessarily like a new uh, concept or a new product. Um, so I was, I was, I was thinking about like, like what is there's all this kind of frenzy around stable coins right now? Like what is actually ch like the technology doesn't seem to have changed materially that much, but I think what's changed is that people are just finally, the light bulbs going off in people's heads where they're realizing, um, that, Hey, there's use cases beyond just, you know, trading, right. Of course. For this, for this, for these technologies. And, um, I'd love for you maybe talk about like, what are some of these other use cases that you're seeing that you're that, I mean, obviously even just. Uh, globally, we're talking sure. about uh, you know a dollar is a store of value. Dollar is obviously you know fairly strong right now, so it makes sense why people would want to uh, diversify their assets into 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 dollarized assets. Um, obviously, there's the cross border you know payments challenges, which is sort of anybody who's ever sent a overseas bank transfer like knows that that's kind of a not always the smoothest process, right? Uh, but what are what maybe some of the main use cases you guys have really seen uh, flourishing for Incredible. the USDC ecosystem right now? Yeah, absolutely. So outside of trading, which which uh, is a, is a, is a massive use case and 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 will continue to grow. The the biggest use cases uh, that 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 are continuing to merge around the world. Number one is that store value that you mentioned um, in in emerging in emerging countries, emerging economies around the world where where maybe their own currency has been devalued over time. Uh, citizens want access to the U.S. dollar, and, and USCC is a great mechanism for them to do so. So um, we're spending a lot of time and effort in, in those emerging markets like uh, Brazil, for instance, uh, where, where citizens there need access to the dollar. Um, and the government is, is, I think, more and more open to this idea in terms of regulation um, to, to, to enable that. And uh, with, with USCC and Circle, we, we announced a partnership with Nubank, where they're enabling 
100 million users for the first time to have access to a digital dollar savings account. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a profound innovation for a country that didn't have access to U.S. dollars before. And so we're seeing uh, more and more companies, more and more citizens around the world just want to retain value of their money uh, to ensure that, that, that you know, they're building uh, lifelong wealth for themselves. That's number one. Uh, number two, again, you mentioned it, cross-border payments. So if you're, if you're a company, say, in, in the United States, and most of your payment operations is inside of the United States, perhaps stable coins probably doesn't make much sense for you today. But if you have global operations, if you have contractors around the world, if you have employees around the world, or if you have suppliers and vendors around the world that require payment, Stablecoin transforms things for you, uh, whether it's the, the the cost effectiveness or really the settlement time and the security around sending money around the world and having it settle in seconds mm -hmm. rather than days or in some cases even weeks. That's the light bulb moment that I think these businesses are are are, are uh, really seeing for the first time. Um, but much so, much more so because regulation is now giving them the ability to to, to really start digging in. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And and um, and going back to your first point about the you know, the new bank example. So I, I'm actually a new bank client. Right. I'm, uh, I'm uh, I've, I've spent some time in Brazil. I have actually have a new do have a new bank account. That's right? incredible. And it's, and it's it's really incredible. Uh, even being able to go into my new bank account and I can I can actually purchase USDC. Uh, I can even earn yield on that USDC now. That's um, right. And in addition to other crypto assets that they have available, and it's really been this massive like onboarding tool uh, in Brazil specifically, and and the other company other countries where New Bank operates. Uh, for people to kind of get their first flavor. I mean, I kind of view the, 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 these types of platforms as almost like the gateway drug, right? Just kind of getting people their first, okay, you have some have some of this, you can transfer it, you can play around with it a little bit. Um, and then you kind of understand the value. Once you use it, once you send the transaction, then you understand the value of it, right? Um, and uh, and obviously the regulatory uh, aspect has been, I think, a pretty critical one for you guys. We had MICA coming into effect or, or MICA, however you ever know how to pronounce it properly. But but that was obviously, you know, uh, I think you guys, you know, play a big role in helping to shape some of that. Of course. Um, and obviously, once businesses are are operating under the, the regulatory uncertainty is now that that haze is now gone. It's like, OK, we can use these this, this we can use this new technology without fear of breaking some sort of rule that maybe we didn't know existed or something. Uh, that's obviously going to be a major catalyst for adoption, I think, as well. Um, I wanted to ask you about, I've been seeing um, just a lot of like of, of just startup activity sure. and like VC, like funding rounds for stablecoin, sure. like infrastructure projects, right? And, and this is the type of stuff where I think in years past, you see these things and it's like, okay, maybe this isn't the most exciting, you know, like a stablecoin company raises like a $50 million like Series A funding round. Right. right? Wait, wait. But now... It seems like there's a lot of innovation just really happening at like just the kind of the picks and shovels infrastructure yep. of, of, okay, like, you know, a company that wants to provide uh, like payroll services in USDC for like foreign employees, yep. right? And basically just providing the picks and shovels where it's, this payment is happening instantaneous. Like the employee doesn't maybe doesn't even know that there's a stable coin involved. It just goes directly into their bank account. And it seems like there's a lot of just like really interesting innovation happening here that maybe like... If you're just looking at that one that one specific company, you're maybe like, okay, I don't really understand why this is that big of a deal. But when you when you look at the entire stablecoin USDC landscape, you kind of start putting together the pieces. Right. And I was wondering if you maybe just talk a bit about that. Like, what are what are some of these, uh, you know, some of the maybe the innovations and maybe the the startup activity that you're seeing sure. in the stablecoin space that's really going to help like you guys and other stablecoin issuers really like bring this stuff mainstream. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think the fascinating thing about all this is that for for the longest time, the actual infrastructure to support billions of dollars of transaction throughput just wasn't there. And over the course of the last 10 years, you're starting to see this innovation in blockchain technology that enables hundreds of millions of users, billions of users move value from one point to another um, and, and having the capacity to, to, to support that. And so we're at that point where the infrastructure layer is available. And so our CEO uh, routinely talks about the, 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 the analogy of moving from modem, you know, dial up to, to broadband mm -hmm. um, and internet. And that that's what's happening um, in, in, in Web3 technology. So the infrastructure layer is there in, t in terms of enabling end users to hold value and, 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 and transfer value. Now, I think you're seeing more and more companies uh, really think through, how do you make the UX better for end users? To your point, they shouldn't know that it's 
blockchain technology, or they shouldn't know that their wallet requires a seed phrase or pass key. They just need to hold value and, and move value. And so you're seeing a lot of companies, um, you know, focus on payments use cases. You're seeing a lot of companies enable merchants to accept traditional card, uh, traditional payment rails like card, wire, and ACH, and have that land for the merchants as USDC, or enabling crypto payments as 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 a general um, as as a general payment rail itself. And so. To the extent you can obfuscate all that technology and just make it easy for end users to move value around, I think that's the dream. And we're beginning to see that. Um, and, and you're seeing a lot of activity, to, to your point, in, in fundraisings, ac acquisitions. Um, and, you know, we're, we're proud to play a role in terms of USDC being that conduit that enables um, businesses and, and consumers alike to move value. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the the Stripe acquisition of, uh, was it Bridge, I think, That's for right. a billion dollars, I think that was kind of the light bulb moment where, where you know, I think everyone, every, immediately my LinkedIn after that was like, everyone seems to be hiving to be like a stable coin infrastructure company. That's <laughs> right. That, right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, want a piece of that pie, right? That's um, right. And maybe to wrap up here, I would love to um, maybe get some like, you know, find some final, maybe some predictions even for 2025. Like what, 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 what should we be expecting to see on the stable coin? I mean, not just maybe, maybe USDC specific, but also just stable coin development general. Like what do you expect to see in 2025 in kind of like a, you know, a, like a mid to base case scenario? Yeah. I, you know, I mean, in terms of, I'll talk about circle and USDC a little bit in terms of what has gotten us to this point and, and, and projecting, you know, next 12 to 24 months. In 2024, as you mentioned, uh, we saw incredible growth. We grew 78% year over year in terms of just total USCC in circulation. Wow. Today, we're around 48 billion. We were the largest, uh, we, we, we had the largest growth rate of all major stable coins. Um, in terms of, in terms of transaction throughput, to date, there's been $20 trillion worth of volume um, in, in stable coin movement in November of 2024 in just that one month. There 20 was one, trillion in one month? No, no, no. 20 trillion Oh. all time. Oh, cumulatively all time. In okay, November, we had one trillion oh, wow. of, 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 of volume. And so, so you're seeing pickup um, outside of just the core trading use cases. You're seeing pickup. Um, and I think what most businesses and, and consumers need is that element of trust. They need to know what that stable coin is, where that dollar is being is, is 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 being held, and they need to have the trust that it's always redeemable. And I think we've focused a lot on that um, at, at Circle. And so now you're seeing the U.S. government really embrace crypto. Uh, Donald Trump launched his own meme coin over over the weekend, and you know it. It's, Talk of the town in Davos, you're right? Yeah, and, 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 <laughs> and and so and so the president of the United States launched a meme coin where that would have been unheard of. Six months ago, even, um, and 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 so I think what you're going to see is incredible activity from mainstream businesses that maybe a year ago were anti crypto, mm. were anti crypto, and they're going to be launching crypto products, and and crypto products could be visible to end users where the end users know it's it's digital assets or to the point you were making it could be invisible where it's just a payment rail and money is moving um leveraging this technology so you'll see banks around the world you'll see fortune 500 companies around the world and mom and pop shops around the world leveraging crypto um and so you know I don't want to make a prediction just for 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 Circle and USCC, but I would expect the 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 one trillion in volume we did in November that could that could ten x um, on a monthly basis um, even by the end of twenty twenty five, and so that's what, really what we're excited about. Yeah, I mean, I think especially if we if, if the markets continue to to go favorably as as we're seeing now, right? Obviously, the trading use case will continue to expand. But I think the downstream effect of that is just the more this the, this asset is in circulation, the more it's being used, whether it's for trading or otherwise. It, it, there's just a there's just a multiplier effect on that, right? Exactly. And um, it, it, people become more comfortable using it. More people are opening wallets. More people are experimenting with it for, for the first time, businesses or, or individuals. And uh, it just becomes kind of a slippery slope from there because yeah. people realize this is this is just like I mean it's I mean I'm not being paid to do your marketing for you, but like, this is like just a fundamentally better way of sending money, but you know, so and you're uh, also going to see, you're also going to see traditional, um, traditional exchanges that may have not offered crypto products in the past, begin to embrace digital assets and begin to embrace USDC and allow it, um, to be used as a trading currency, allow it to be used as collateral. Mm -hmm. So that's the light bulb moment when, when, when digital assets are enabled to be used as collateral in, in traditional capital markets, um, not just because of speed and efficiency and, 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 you know, there's 
you know, TMMFs and, and, and yield bearing yield bearing tokens, but it's going to infiltrate traditional capital markets and it'll probably happen this year. Wow. This year. Okay. I think so. All right. All right. Well, we'll have to check back in uh, Davos 26 and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, hopefully we'll that, an hopefully that prediction is correct. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, but irrespective, man, I think really exciting times for industry and, uh, and congratulations on, I, I know you guys have had like kind of a really wild ride the last few years, like a lot of ups, a lot of downs, uh, a lot of in-betweens. A lot but, of battle scars, but yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been great. It's time in it's, the trenches. You know, absolutely. So there's uh, like they say, there's uh, no atheists in foxholes, right? You know, so, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but Cash, really appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on the show here. Wishing you uh, a lot of success this week in Davos. Yeah, love it. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks everyone. We'll be back uh, soon with another episode.